Socket sealing is an important part of my implant practice. Let me explain why. We've mentioned on the show many times that we want to maintain, not regain tissue. So what that means is we don't want, uh, after an extraction, we don't want the site to remodel. We don't want the bone to collapse. We don't want the tissue to collapse and then have to grow that back. You can do it. It's just time consuming and and challenging. It it takes more components. It's, 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 it's a lot longer. It's none of it's fun. Okay. If you can maintain all of that, if you can maintain the bone, you can maintain the soft tissue, you get a, you get a better outcome. So there's a concept that was published in 2010 by Georgia Trimpu, and she called it the socket sealing technique. And the idea is imagine that you took out a tooth and you place an implant and right after you place the implant, you gap grafted. So you gap, you, you graft around the gap between the implant and the walls of the, of, of the socket. You have to have a good way to keep that graft in place. Well, imagine you, you could place a cork on top of the socket to seal it all in place. And that cork in this place would be a non-functional provisional. And so if you place a non-functional provisional on top of your implant, it seals all of your graft material in place and it gives you amazing outcomes. It is my number one way to crush implants in the aesthetic zone. And I mean crush to the point where if I showed you an after photo from just this week and I push and I put it in fact, in fact, here it is right here. We'll put it up right here. This is the after photo from this week of, of an implant that we placed and we placed the provisional non-functional provisional. And so I won't tell you which one it is. You guys just look at the picture and try to figure it out. Cause if you, if you're having a hard time figuring out, that's what I'm talking about. That's the quality of work we want to deliver to our patients in the aesthetic zone. So when this patient heals, this soft tissue and hard tissue will be so close to being ideal that when it's time to make the final provisional, the, the, the final uh, prosthesis rather, it will, be, it will be so easy to make and it will be so beautiful and long lasting that it's a, it's a great outcome. So that's what we want to do, socket sealing. Now people will say, well, what about the posterior? And I don't do socket sealing in the posterior. And the reason is, is that I don't find a need for it. In in the industry right now, there's a really big trend. There's a real big push for these custom sealing uh, abutments, like a custom made abutment designed to seal in the posterior. If you're doing this chair side, unless you've got like an hour of extra time on your hands, it's just brutal. I mean, if you watch any of the videos of people doing this, all of the lab work and chair side and everything that they do to try to get this to work. And, and what I found is it's just not necessary. I don't have a lot of remodeling in the posterior. So the main reason is, is that the bone is typically so thick back there that you don't, it doesn't remodel. If the, if, the, if the labial and lingual plates are still intact, if the radicular bone is still intact after the extraction, and you get your implant in, gap graft it, and let it leave it alone. Uh, you haven't raised a flap, you're not going to have a lot of, of uh, remodeling from not having a blood flow for six to seven days on the, on the buckle plate. So just don't flap, get your tooth out, place your implant, gap graft, and leave it alone, and you'll have beautiful results with you know 100% aesthetic results. And in, in the folks that are promoting these custom abutments, I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know because you can. Maybe that's why they're doing it because you can. But in my practice, I try not to do things just because I can. I try to do things because they make sense. And, and I, don't, I don't find that it's necessary to do a socket sealing in the posterior. The graft material is captured within the clot, the blood clot, which is a fibrin clot in the first 10 to 12 minutes after the, the graft goes in. So as long as your protocol is proper, and what I mean by that is, is that when you get the implant in, you must gap graft right away. If you wait, for instance, you place the implant and then you say to your assistant, okay, go get the graft material. And then they're going, they're hunting through the drawers to find the graft material. Then, then they try to get that little metal ring off the top that everybody hates that takes forever to get off. And they're fighting with it and they finally get it off and you've waited 10 to 12 minutes. You already have a fibrin clot around your implant. Well, you now you have a choice. You can either try to push your graft material into the fibrin clot, not a good idea, or you can use your high-speed suction and suck it out and then place your graft again. Well, the problem with that is, is that when you suck it out, you don't necessarily initiate a good blood flow again. And so if you don't have good blood flow, you don't have good blood flow around your graft material, you get less than ideal outcome on your grafting. So the, the proper way to do it, the most efficient way to do it, is to have everything set up ahead of time because you know, taking out a tooth, you are going to graft that site 
one way or another. If the implant doesn't have primary stability, you're still grafting, okay? So if the implant has stability, you're gap grafting. So you're gonna graft. So have the graft material out, have it ready to go. So take the tooth out, place the implant, and then gap graft right away, right away. Get it in there so that the blood flows around your graft and gets a nice good fibrin clot in 10 to 12 minutes. Boom, that fibrin clot is going to hold your graft material in place. You don't need a socket seal to maintain or to hold it. It's going to hold just fine. It's not gonna fall out as long as they don't suck on a, on a straw, okay? As long as they do what you tell them to do and your post-op instructions like you do normally, you're not gonna have any complications with losing your graft to the oral environment. And so in the posterior, I don't do socket sealing, sealing, okay? It's just, in my opinion, not necessary. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a follow, and we'll see you on the next video.